Hill, and welcome to the Fort Church Online. We can't all be together in one room, but we don't have to be alone. In fact, we want you to talk to us. Make a comment while watching, give us a shout out, share a verse or an encouraging thought. There's a link in the description that will take you to our connection e-card. If you have a prayer request or if this is your first time watching, please take the time to click the link and let us know. Before we begin, can I ask you to share this video on your social media page? It's an easy way to remind folks to watch while also introducing new viewers. Thank you again for watching. Let's worship together.
of my enemies I raise my hallelujah louder than the unbelief I'm raising hallelujahs cause my weapon it's a melody I'm raising hallelujah The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper When the darkness falls, it won't prevail Cause the guy I serve knows only how to triumph My God will never fail No, my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Oh, yes There's power in the mighty name of Jesus Every war he wages he will win And I'm not backing down from any giants Cause I know how the story ends Yes, I know how this story ends I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see. the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good, you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good, I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you. I'm gonna see you victory. I'm gonna see you victory for the battle.
Fort Church, we welcome you and we welcome you again. We can't express how much your online presence means to us and has meant to us um, over this period of time. Um, Thank you for joining us and thank you for choosing us to worship with. It means so much. There's a link to the connection card in the description if you have any prayer requests or if you have any needs that you'd like to vocalize. Please take the time to fill one out or if it's just your first time joining us, we'd love for you to make that known through that link in the description. Thank you so much again. We love you and we're praying for you day in and day out. Let's keep worshiping together. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place I worship you, I worship you And you are here, moving in our midst I worship you, I worship you darkness my god that is who you are oh we make a miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are here touching every heart and i worship worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. And you are here, you're turning lives around. I worship you. Jesus, I worship you. Even when I don't see it, you're working 
again Even when I don't feel it, you are again Never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you are again Even when I don't feel it, you are again You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, no A promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, we make a miracle work, a promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. morning church I hope you're well today uh, I don't know about you but I am having a restless feeling uh, things are beginning to really wake up in the world I it's uh, coming out of this two months of of lockdown and quarantine and fear over this uh, this virus and I really feel like things are just kind of waking up. I know they are in my own spirit and and in my own emotions um, over the last several months we've been working really hard to try and figure things out and problem solve on streaming and cameras and all this kind of stuff that I never thought I'd have to know that much about and uh, we're kind of through that and now I'm looking forward to what's coming ahead and I am I am anxious for it. I'm, I'm restless for it and um, I'm yearning for it. Um, today I want to uh, share with you a psalm that, um, that helps me to, to think through this kind of, uh, these kind of restless feelings that I have. Some of them uh, are good, I think, anticipating good things, but sometimes I get so restless and, and yearning for what's coming in the future that um, it becomes detrimental to how I am experiencing what's going on right before me right now and enjoy my relationship with my family and my God. And so I know that many of you may still be having restless feelings. Some of you are back at work or you never stopped work. Life hadn't changed that much. But for many people, things are beginning to wake up and you're, you're yearning for that, that time to get back to normal. Some of you um, are, are you're farther away, um, actually, from, from getting back to life as normal because you are, are someone who is in what we call an at-risk category um, you know, and, and needing to be careful how they get out and, and making sure that they take very, uh, you know, very serious precautions and, and being very careful. And so maybe you're seeing things way off in the distance and maybe you're even more restless than, than some of the rest of us. And, um, and I just want to let you know that, um, that we identify and, and we're praying for all of you and, and all across the board. And because there's every kind of person in our church right now, those who haven't missed a beat and been kept, kept going the whole time and those who have had their lives completely shut off and, and blocked out people who haven't been able to, to see and touch their families. And so 
I know that there's all kinds of restlessness around us. And so what I want to do is I want to go to this psalm. I want to share with you this psalm, which, um, which is this yearning psalm for, for being with the people of God and, and being back in the presence of God and having God's Spirit fill us and, and fill us with joy and excitement again. Um, but, and, then I, and then through that, I just want to give you, I think, really just one point of, uh, of application to try and help you through this time, through these next... Uh, days, weeks, and um, and we'll talk a little bit about um, what's going to be happening with the church, and and so. But let's let's jump into this. It's Psalm 42, Psalm 42, and it says this, and maybe some of you are familiar with this first line. It says, "As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God?" My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God, under the protection of the Mighty One, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. My, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? The psalmist here is, uh, is yearning for the presence of God and yearning for being in a, in a situation that he remembers that he's obviously not to be able to, to be in right now where he is in the, the, the place of, of praising God, where he's in the place where, where he is in the house of God and the presence of the Mighty One with the shouts of joy and praise. And when I read that, all I can think about is, yes, I miss being with the people of God, in the presence of God, and praising His name, and, and singing for joy, and experiencing all of that together, hearing your voices sing, hearing uh, the band in person, um, and our worship leaders, and, uh, and being able to, to look into your faces, and, and to, to see the things that you're happy about, and, and sad about, and, and the difficulties that you're going through, and the joys that you're experiencing, and being able to share with you the Word of God, and the hope of God right into your lives. I'm, I miss that. It's something that I, I long to be back into our presence, uh, into the presence of our, our church buildings with our people. And, um, and I feel that restlessness. It, it says like a, a deer pants for streams of water. Um, you know, when a, when a deer is, uh, is panting or a dog's panting, I don't know that I've ever seen a deer pant, but I've seen a dog pant uh, plenty of time. But, you know, just <sighs> wanting something to drink. I think more, um, well, something I can identify more with is, you know, when I am incredibly thirsty, but, it, you know, I, I don't do a lot to, to make myself real, real tired and thirsty these days. Um, but, but when I think about like when I was a kid and we'd be out playing and running and riding our bikes and we'd ride our bikes all day long and just ride and ride and ride. You never think about taking a break or getting anything to drink. And then when you finally do, you pull up into somebody's yard and your bikes and you go to their hose pipe and you turn it on and you just let that water just show into your mouth. And, uh, and just so good, that rubber tasting water. I just wish I had a big glass of it right now. And just, just gulping it down, gulp, 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 and just let it run over you because you're so thirsty in that moment. Um, you can and identify and that's kind of the the feeling that I have like now we've been running and going during this time of being separated and I'm ready I'm ready to just just soak in and just absorb and to drink in the presence of God and his people all together and I know that that is something that you are desiring too um, but let me say that it is not just about this physical separation that we have right now during this time of quarantine and coronavirus. There's actually, for you and for me, I bet you that you have experienced this kind of yearning in the past. And maybe you didn't know exactly what it was. Maybe you didn't know that you were yearning to be in the presence of God and with the presence of His people. But you had a spiritual restlessness that you knew something was not right, something was, was not 
not as it should be. And you knew you needed something. You knew you needed something. And maybe in, during that time you said, I need to get back to church. I need to go back to church. Or I need to read my Bible. Or I need to pray. You knew there was something lacking. You knew there was this restlessness in you that something needed to change. There was a dissatisfaction. And, and you were yearning to get back to something. And maybe you didn't even know what it is. And maybe right now you're listening to me and you're going, I got a restlessness, but I didn't know it was to get back to church. I just know that spiritually I feel dry and thirsty and God feels far away and, and I am restless in that. I want something different. I want to feel lifted up. I want to feel like I could shout for joy in, in this situation. And so as, the, uh, as this uh, psalmist says that his soul is thirsting for God, he's identified what it is that he's longing for in his soul. He's identified what it is that is uh, that is missing, that is making him restless, that makes him um, yearn for something else, that pants and, and is thirsty for something. And he knows that it is the presence of God, that it is God's presence that he wants. Now, for you and I, we think, well, God, God's promised that he will always be with his children. He's given us his spirit. You know, he's, he has is, he is saved us by the sacrifice of Jesus. He's given us His Spirit. How is, it, how is it possible that we could ever feel far from Him? Has His Spirit left us? Has He gone away from us? And the Bible says that He never will. He'll never leave us by ourselves, that He will, he will always be there with us. His Spirit will always be there with us. And so why is it that we get these feelings of spiritual dryness and, and, and restlessness well, we go through times in our lives like this right now, like this right now, but it may be a bigger picture thing for you. It may be something that goes way back. It may be, it may be just a, 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 a habit that you've got into, or you've gotten away from the spiritual disciplines of prayer and reading God's Word, and there is this yearning, this desire, this thirst, but you don't even know exactly how to pinpoint it and exactly what to go um, to, how to remedy it. And um, for Getting back to the, the church and, and our desire to be back in among the people of God in these places that we, that we love and have been such a part of our spiritual uh, growth and, and upbringing. And we desire to be back there because we identify those situations, those rooms, those people, those songs, those experiences. We identify that with the presence of God in our lives because we've had such great experiences in those rooms, in these sanctuaries. We remember what it felt like and it is good and it is right to be with the people of God. We can't do this forever. We've got to get back to being with one another. And let me just stop right here because I know that's the question for many of you. All right, Matt, you want it. I want it. When are we going to get back to church? And so let me tell you right now we are working on our plans to get back into in-person services. I'm so thankful once again for all that our staff have done to put together amazing online worship services. We've had incredible feedback. People are, um, people's lives are being changed. People are getting saved. People are desiring to be baptized. People are, um, are reaching out in, in all sorts of ways through uh, desiring for prayer and ministry. And it is, uh, it's been really, really good. I'm so proud of our staff. And um, you take time maybe in the comments and just tell them how thankful you are for their effort really and they have worked harder than ever to stay connected with you when it has been so hard during this time to do that and so you tell them maybe tell them in the comments right now how proud of them you are how much you love them how much you appreciate them they have worked so hard for you and they've been praying for you and they love you and so um, let them know let them know um, and so we want to be back we want to be back um, but we want to be careful we want, to, we want to be wise and we want to be compassionate. Um, we, uh, this, the, the whole thing with this thing, and I'll just be really honest with you, from start to finish, every week of this whole thing has just been completely different. And it feels like every week you had people saying, it's no big deal, it's the end of the world. And now it feels like whatever you know, way you, uh, you know, read the, the data on how many people are sick and how many people are, are losing their lives, and it feels like, well, you've got to read it as a Democrat or a Republican or something. It's just, it's just so frustrating to me when I, I know people 
have, have lost their lives. I know people are sick and separated from their families. I know people have lost their jobs. And it's all, of, all of that, it seems like the compassion for all of it across the board is missing from these conversations. And what I want for us to do is, whatever we do, I want us to first have the love of God filling us and, and pouring out towards our brothers and sisters. We want to have God's compassion for them. We want to care for them. And so we just want to be careful. We just want to be careful. We want to be wise. Um, all, the, all the restrictions that they say you should have if you get back into church um, right now um, are you know, things that are just would be very burdensome. Things that we're working on, you know, we wanna, we're going to make it uh, as safe and as clean as possible when we get back. And, and all those things, we're going to take all the precautions we need to do. But it's, it's not just an overnight kind of thing. We want to make sure we do it right. We want to prepare. And lots of volunteers involved, some of them who would, who would consider themselves in the at-risk category. We want them to be careful. We don't want them to feel pressured that they need to do something that the church is, is starting back. Well, they need to get back into their position. We don't, we don't want anyone to feel spiritually burdened by anything that we're doing. And so we're being careful. We're being cautious. We're being uh, wise uh, or trying to be wise. And so what I want, just want you to know right now is we're working on the plans. And we have, we've just said to give ourselves space and to give ourselves time and to give uh, you know, more time for, for knowledge to come in and for us to prepare. Um, the earliest that we will have in-person services is going to be that first Sunday in June. And so we're, we kind of got that date out there as, as a, a, a first possibility. Now, listen, I still, I want to be honest with you. I don't know exactly what's going to happen in the next few weeks, but we're, we're working hard at it in the same way that you, your, uh, your staff is, has worked hard to stay connected with you through the effort of these online services. We're working hard now to get back to where we can be in person, but do it the right way with compassion because we are like this psalmist who says that they long, they have, they have, uh, they have, uh, great depression and sadness and restlessness and yearning for being with the people of God. And um, they long, he longs to be um, back there where he can hear the shouts of praise among the festive throng. I'm looking forward to that. And let me just tell you, it is coming. It is coming. Don't listen to those people that say things will never be the same ever again. Um, it is coming a day where we will be able to, to join back in and to sing songs of praises together and to, and to embrace one another and to pray for one another. It is coming. It is coming. So. Let's go back, and I just want to give you a, a one point of application to, um, to, to do when, when you're feeling restless like this or when you're feeling sad or you're feeling depressed. Um, I, want you to, I want you to try and do what this psalmist has done. He's identified his restlessness and his depression and his sadness, and now he is he's basically talking to himself. He's, he's saying, now, soul... Why are you so downcast, right? Why, my soul, are you so downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Now, this is going to seem like a very subtle sort of nuance, maybe even crazy to you kind of thing. Most of the time, we are listening to ourselves, right? We're listening to ourselves say all kinds of worrisome, negative anxious thoughts like we're I don't know what's going to happen in this situation or um, or Matt you're you're not good enough to to work through this or you're not good enough to do what you need to do or you messed up in the past and that's a, affecting everything in your future or this is not going to we're, we're never going to have the money to do that or you know you speak to yourself all the time and it just feeds the worry and the anxiousness and the restlessness and and we're just going to be like this forever and what I see right in front of me is just is 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 in our mind, we just whatever we see right in front of me, we just tell ourselves that's the end, that's the story, that's what's going to happen, um, and that is not the case. We know that we are to be a people of hope, that there is a better day coming, that there are new things that are on the horizon for us. We talked about that last week, being thankful for what's happened in the past and pointing to those things and saying how thankful we are for those things that that God has done for us. And so here in this psalm, this, uh, this psalmist, he is depressed and he's sad and he's restless and he wants something better. And he knows that. He knows that about himself. And now he's talking to himself. He's trying to basically 
coach himself up. Instead of just listening to those downcast thoughts, those depressed feelings and those anxious thoughts and those thoughts of being not good enough or it's never going to get better. Instead of just listening to those, he begins to speak to his own soul. He begins to, in a sense, he begins to preach to himself. And this is something that I think about for myself. And maybe it's easier for me because I am a pastor, but I think about preaching to myself all the time. Sometimes I use that expression, I'm preaching to myself today. But, but really, I, I believe in the power of preaching God's Word and, and encouraging people and trying to, through the inspiration of God, God's Word, to, to pass on God's Word and, and God's Holy Spirit to inspire you to life change and to thinking change and, and uh, to incredible things in your own life and changing the way that you, you think about God and you think about yourself and how that affects your spirit and your emotions. I believe there's incredible power in preaching. I wish I was better at it for your sake. I wish I was, a, I wish I was better because I just, I know that how I've been fed by, by other preaching and, and just how in times God is able to just empower His Word through the preaching and through the encouragement for somebody that that is given themselves to the word and then loves a group of people and then is trying to with all of their all of their calling and all of the the work of the holy spirit to to deliver to them some encouragement from God's word or some correction or some direction from God's word and that's that's my passion when when I preach is that I would I would help direct you back to God that I would point your thoughts back to God and that that not that you would just learn something new, but that you would love Jesus more. And so I think of that all the time that I need to preach to myself. When I get down or when I get desperate or when I get restless, I think, Matt, don't let these thoughts continue to control you, but now preach the gospel to yourself. Preach these good things to yourself. You know, call into question these, these emotions that you know are just dragging you down. Sometimes we just wallow in those. We just hold on to them and we wallow in those, those, um, those emotions. And that's where we get deeper and deeper into depression. You can hear it in, uh, in the psalmist here. He says, my soul is downcast within me. But he says, therefore, I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the heights of Mount Mazar. He said, deep calls to deep in the roar of the waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love as night. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. He says, in the midst of this depression, in the midst of this sadness, this restlessness, he is now, his soul, even though it's downcast, is pointing its thoughts back to God, is praising God, remembering the power of God and what God is able to do. He says, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by my enemy, my bones? He comes back into the, here's these thoughts that he's having. He's, he's identifying them. And he said, why am I having these, these thoughts? My bones suffer mortal, mortal agony. My foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? He's talking to himself. He's going back to himself. Here's the depressed, the restless, the anxious, the hard thoughts that he's having and sometimes they just control his life they come in but he's saying no 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 soul why are you downcast you know the God who spoke the world into existence it says now put your hope in God speaking to yourself Matt put your hope in God it's not just what you see in front of you it's not just the circumstances of the day. Matt, put your hope in God. Church, put your hope in God. Preach to yourself. When, when, when it comes over you during the week, when you feel like you can't go on or you feel like you just got to get out or whatever it is, it comes in all ways, all fashions, and you're feeling spiritually dry and you're feeling far from God. And in that moment, just begin to ask yourself, begin to preach to yourself, soul, don't let it just, don't let your doubt and your self-talk just keep coming at you. Stop in the moment and say, why? Why is my soul downcast? Why am I depressed? Why am I restless? Why do I feel there'll be no end to this? No, I will put my hope in God. I will put my, let's see the, the psalmist here, he's, he's saying, I'll put my hope in God. 
the one that I did praise before, the one that I know I'll be back in the presence of God's people, praising him again. I will put my hope in God. I will, uh, will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. When, when I read that last line of that psalm, it says, my Savior and my God, my Savior and my God. There in the Old Testament, um, the Old Testament psalmist would think of God saving power coming in, like in the Exodus, delivering God's people out of slavery. But for you and I, for you and I, we think Savior, we think Jesus. We should. We think Savior, we think of Jesus. And there's several things in the psalm that make me think of Jesus. You know, when I am yearning and thirsty for the presence of God, you know, I read this, this verse too, my soul thirsts for God. My soul thirsts for God. Can you think of the one who on the cross said, I thirst, I'm thirsty. Down in verse 10 where he says that my foes taunt me and they say, where is your God? To those who said uh, to Jesus as he hung on the cross, where is your God? Let him save you now. And those who um, feel like God has forgotten them, forsaken them. We've talked about this a few weeks ago. In verse 9 it says, why have you forgotten me? Or as Jesus said on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We, in the midst of our restlessness or depression or, or sadness or spiritual dryness, we can, we can wallow in those things and we can keep speaking those negative things in our lives. And listen, I'm not telling you that, that saying the right words to yourself is going to magically bring you out of something. But I'm telling you that sometimes you need to stop and you need to preach your, to yourself. And what you need to preach to yourself is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That Jesus did suffer on that cross. He did thirst. He was betrayed. He was broken uh, and, and put in, uh, into the grave. But God raised him up and we preach that to ourselves. More worried about the future. We remember that God got up from the grave to prove that we have a future and a hope. That we remember that it is God who gave us the life of His Son and now gives that life into us through His Holy Spirit. And when you're preaching to yourself, when you're preaching to yourself, let me tell you something. You're going to find that something happens in your, and I know this sounds great, but something happens in your preaching to yourself is the same thing that happens sometimes when I'm preaching to you. Because sometimes people will come up to me after a sermon and they're going to go, they'll, they'll say things like this. And maybe you've been in this situation like, how did you know what I was going through? Or God spoke to me so powerfully through what you said. That's not me. That's not my creativity. That's not my smarts because y'all know I ain't smart. That's not me. That is through the preaching of the gospel with the power of the Holy Spirit. With the power of God in it, He does something in your heart. And He changes the direction of your thoughts and of your mind. And if you preach to yourself, if you talk to yourself, if you preach to yourself the hope of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ in the midst of sadness and suffering, you're going to have moments where sometimes you just feel like you're just trying to coach yourself up. But there's going to be other moments where the Holy Spirit of God empowers that in your life and is going to raise you up and strengthen you in that moment and put your eyes on better things, on, on the things of God, on a good future. I am looking forward forward to being on the other side of this. But listen, some of you have been looking forward to being on the other side of some kind of sadness, some kind of anxiety, some kind of restlessness for a long time. I encourage you today, like the psalmist says, put your hope in God. Put your hope in the Savior who gave His life for you on the cross and God raised Him up from the dead so that you could have hope for this life. Put your hope in Him. Quit telling yourself you're not good enough. Quit telling yourself you have no value. Quit telling yourself it'll never be different. You could never change. Because Jesus died and rose from the dead to prove, to demonstrate that there is no circumstance in this life that He does not have power over. And if you put your hope and trust in Him, He will do the same in your life. 
Don't preach that. Preach this truth. Don't preach that you'll never be better, that you'll never change. Preach the truth that God has made a way for you to have new life and He wants you to have it today. Would you just give your life over to Him? Put your life, put your trust, your hope in Him today. Let's pray. Father, God, I pray that many today will... Um, will turn from the, the negative thoughts of their mind and God would begin to, um, to preach the gospel of hope and salvation to themselves. God, I pray that, that they would continue, not, not just today, but in, in, in the middle of the week, God, when those feelings come upon them, God, that they, would, that they would preach the gospel and you would empower it by your Holy Spirit to transform their lives, to give them hope, God, to wake them up to the truth that you have not left them, but you are close by. God, I pray that there are some that for the first time today have trusted you and given their life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Grand earth has quaked before Moved by the sound of his voice and seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard and through it all through it all my eyes are on you and through it all not believe even when these eyes can't see though the mountain that's in front of me it will be thrown into the mist of the sea cause through it all through it all my eyes are
We hope that you are encouraged by today's online service. We would love to hear from you. In the description of this post, you will find an online connection card where you can share a decision or a prayer request. If you prefer, you can send us a text at 706-705-5585. Also, would you consider sharing this service on your social media? If you feel led to give, you can click on the link below. Additional resources regarding kids' worship and midweek Bible study can be found at our website, fortchurch.org. Fort Church, have a wonderful day.